I have wife as that could say I have wife as that could say I have wife as my Enos is bleeding. Boog didn't quite know what to make of all of this, other than this was a really weird way to start a video. Where'd you move here from? Hey everyone, before we begin, I gotta chill for a bit. First of all, I have a new Twitter, again. New account is at Lone Grips. The last one got falsely reported by Sonic fans. Uh, I am now the- I also have Instagram, uh, that one too. And I have El Patreon, you can give me money. If I get a thousand dollars, I'll post feed pics or something. Anyways, that's all, bye! <laughs> This shit. My voice is kind of bad right now. I just woke up, but fuck it because open season is officially back. There's been a lot of speculation, but speculate no more because it's finally out. We are so back, boys. We are so back. You and I are gonna tear shit up. Open season, Call of Nature. Arguably the most anticipated project of the decade. This shit means something to me, man. It's finally released. And, uh... <laughs> Brazil. This here is the greatest TV show rollout of all time. And by that I mean there there was none. There, there really wasn't any. Open season Call of Nature is the TV show of all time. This is the latest installment in the open season franchise. A franchise that I've reviewed all the movies of. And the video game. And my first question is, uh, why does this exist at all? Look, I know I'm the number one open season channel, you know what I mean? But outside of ironic and maybe nostalgic value, open season does not have any kind of community or fan base. It's not like, for example, the infamous Alpha and Omega where I can, you know, kinda get the appeal. Alpha and Omega was released in 2010 by Crest Animation Studios to widespread uh, critical derision and financial ruin. There's the scene where Garth is teaching Lily how to hunt and pounce and it's... This will do that to me. Yeah, I could definitely use a drink. And furthermore, most of the people who even remember Open Season are like, you know, my age, in their 20s. The kids nowadays are, you know, Gen Alpha, you know what I mean? They're in a skibbity toilet, not Ashton Kutcher. I mean, why would you want to be into Ashton Kutcher now? You know what I mean? But either way, the cultural relevance of Open Season has been kind of dead from the start. I'm just wondering why this exists is all. And it gets even weirder because this TV show has been barely marketed at all. In fact, I would even say this show has hasn't been marketed, period. I kid you not, my shitpost video on this show and the limited information there was, not only was that video alone the most marketing push this show has received, that video also includes all the marketing material that came out for the show. And furthermore, the show isn't technically uh, supposed to be out yet. It's supposed to come out 2024, but no, actually, the show is premiering right now in Latin America and Brazil. People are ripping the fucking thing. You can go to Brazilian Discovery Plus and watch the show right now. The show came out before any proper marketing has. This is why the logo is in a different language, because the show isn't out in America yet. So really, you're getting early access. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. However, uh, you may be wondering, uh, wait a minute though, Dumzy. You just said the show is premiering now. Does that mean it's not over yet? Yes, it does, my friend. It means the show is currently not completely Aired. And after watching all the episodes that are currently out at the time of this video being made, I am thankful to say that watching the entire show is not a requirement because nothing happens in this. <laughs> Open season Call of Nature is Spongebob. So the show isn't formatted as episode 1, 2, or 3. Instead, it's episode 1A, 2A, 2B. For every episode, there is an A and a B episode. Each one lasting around 10 to 12 minutes. And every A and B episode is meant to take up an entire episode, you know, like Spongebob. Each new episode has a new wacky, funny scenario that makes you laugh out loud, LOL, XD. So reviewing this thing would be like reviewing an entire season of Spongebob. Like, what would there be to talk about? You know what I mean? Let's talk 
about the visuals first. Uh, the animation is, uh, it looks both very stilted yet also really fluid. It's weird. This might shock you, but I'm not an animator at all. For my limited knowledge, some of this does look just very stiff. But at the same time, certain models look very expressive at certain points. And sometimes it'll be like a mix of both. Like someone behind the scenes was fighting over whether the animation should be good or bad. Like it's really weird. I will say this, it looks better than Clona High season two. There you go. Remember everyone, animation is cinema, said the guy who's only seen Spider-Verse. Can we get an open season show made by Donna Hertzfeld? I would really love that. My anus is bleeding. I will say, though, a lot of the characters do translate into 2D pretty well. I was at first pretty skeptical, but seeing them in motion, I'm seeing the vision now. Overall, the animation isn't great, but it gets the job done, I guess. I mean, look at it this way. This is the third best animated open season thing. And I hope all the poor animators that were probably forced onto this thing get better jobs in the future. I'm sure it at least would put something on your resume. What also is, uh, is the voice acting. Again, everyone's been recasted. Boog is now played by Jonathan Lang. Done? I have never heard of this man before today, but he was apparently in a show called Robin Hood? A show that's about Robin Hood in the modern day, but they rap about their crimes. And it's apparently made by director X. X apparently he used to go by Little X, so he used to be Teen X, then he turned to a man, now they call him X-Man, you know, Boy Barbie, Opium Ken Carson. What else did this guy make? I gotta know. <gasps> He also sounds next to nothing like Martin Lawrence at all. Don't you think it seems a little weird that Elliot saved your life? What? Awful. Garbage. To be fair, he doesn't give a bad performance at all, but it is a pretty jarring. It sounds almost too high pitched for his character. I don't like this guy, E. Don't you think he's acting even a little suspicious? I think it's the accent. It just really throws me off. Like he's trying too hard, but ends up sounding nothing like Martin Lawrence at all, you know? Next up, we got my boy, Ashton Kutcher. Not the actual one, though. Oh, uh, fuck that guy. Wait a minute. What if I were to, you know, <laughs> Ashton Kutcher. This time he's played by Joshua Graham. No, not that one. Waging war against good people is bad for the soul. What's also bad for the soul is not having a big booty Latina e-girl to sit on your face. This may not seem important to you now. But it's the most important thing I've said. So true. This time he sounds more like Weird Al Yankovic than Ashton Kutcher. Maybe we could invite the rest of the gang to share in our good fortune. When I'm with my family, it's just Al Yankovic. Again, it's not a bad on its own. It's just not the Ashton Kutcher I know. One that is actually bad though is Mr. Weenie. This guy just pretty much does a German accent without the actual emotional inflections of the original voice actors. The ones that made him sound cowardly on top of German. So the new guy just sounds like he has a frog in his throat the whole time. Check me out. I am doing so food. Same for Patrick Warburton, who isn't played by Patrick Warburton. And God does it show. There's only one option. We need to chase it out of here. What the fuck? Overall, the voice acting, while not the worst thing ever, is definitely like, huh? So what is the plot of this show? Well, first of all, I think it takes place between open seasons one and two. And I think this is yet another soft reboot, maybe? Because Mr. Weenie is a part of the crew. Like he was at the end of open season one and carries over none of the development from open season two, you know, if you want to call it development. And there are also brand new characters in this. Characters that don't exist in the open season lore, nor do any of the other new characters from the sequels appear in this thing. So I think it's a soft reboot for now. Of course, that's just speculation out of me kind of joking. What I actually think is they just simply put, didn't give a shit, which begs the question, why was this made at all? That's a question I asked myself when continuing to watch this. This is by all means a SpongeBob styled serialized comedy show, meaning there is no real overarching plot, just characters dicking around. It's incredibly basic, which at the very least is pretty on par with the P of this franchise, but I doubt this thing will actually go anywhere substantial. Especially when for a comedy show, it just isn't very funny. And a lot of the scenarios in these episodes are pretty generic. And the jokes are shockingly boring. There are some fart gags those are as funny as you would expect them to be. But that's kind of as low as the show gets. Open season Call of Nature just it kind of exists. Without really making its own mark anywhere at all. In other words, the whole thing is just kind of mid. Every single thing in it is mid! I guess I can try and describe what actually happens in some of these episodes. And while this obviously isn't the whole show because it's unfinished, trust me, you'll understand why there isn't a whole lot to see. The first episode involves Boog and Ashton Kutcher dicking around for food. But then they encounter one of the new characters in our cast, this monkey character who is incredibly annoying. I feel so alive! I've never ever felt more 
more wild! They gonna use beer for that? I can't believe they have open season fan characters now. Original self inserts. Don't steal, please. Anyways, this character's from the circus and they want to be a wild animal now. But then some slapstick happens and they save our main characters and they're wild now and that's the whole episode. Again, I'm not kidding. That's just the whole thing. Next episode is about another character named Norm the Vulture, who is outcasted from his vulture group for being a vegan. This guy is also another new character and he's just kind of there for the whole series. Very strong character. Character. He's then kidnapped by McSquizzy, the Irish squirrel, and they invite him into the camp despite racial tensions. But because of said racial tensions, Boog and Ash and Kutcher decide to try and make him eat meat so he can be invited back into Vulture society. This, of course, leads to multiple hilarious hijinks. And then, long story short, an actual Vulture attack happens and Norm saves everyone, meaning he is finally part of the cast and crew now. There's an episode where the characters want to go to the beach and swim, but they're invaded by naked mole rats. So they pull a good old Call of Duty modern warfare nuke scene and this causes a peace treaty and that's the whole episode there's an episode where boog and ash and kutcher fight and no longer become best friend roommates but they make up at the end so who the fuck cares there's one episode where ash and kutcher steals from this uh, cat here a character is introduced like we're supposed to already know who she is and by the way is better introduced in a later episode anyways so like what was the point of this the characters then get a random guard dog and start dicking around with him but then get tired of him and give him to the spoiled rich cat character and that's the whole episode episode. Again, what was the point of this? There's an episode where Boog is picking berries and ends up eating too many and gets all walked out on the walk hard. But he also loses Dinkleman, his little plush character along the way. He then starts going all crazy looking for him and shit, but then Norm the Vulture comes out and reveals that he fixed him the whole time. And that's the whole episode. There's then the next episode which features this wolf character arriving in the camp that the show takes place in. He then talks about a lake monster that might destroy the camp so all the characters have to hunt him down. But turns out his actual plan is to bathe them in goat blood and sacrifice them to Satan. You know, double O opium shit. But Boog, who is skeptical of him the whole time, ends up saving everyone and murdering the wolf. This is the most interesting episode in the whole series, and it's just kind of predictable. There's an episode where Ashen Kutcher saves the life of Patrick Warburton, of course by complete accident, and Patrick Warburton ends up obeying his every move. The buck code is an ancient set of rules that all alpha males like me follow. So then Ashen Kutcher starts abusing his power, then gets tired of not Patrick Warburton always stalking him every second. But long story short, during a wacky scenario, Boog saves them and Ian becomes Boog's slave. Can't wait for whoa, the fan art to depict whoa, whoa, that. Whoa. But the next two episodes are actually a two-parter we're gonna cover together. About... <sighs> live streaming. Oh boy, I can't wait to see how not pandering and not out of touch this is. Keep that high energy going, folks! Never mind, the fucking animals are twerking. Now compare this to open season one. <laughs> so the basic premise is Boog is nostalgic for his old days in the circus. To the point where he owns an entire shack of old memorabilia. So Ash and Kutcher tries to cheer him up by making a whole show for him. Meanwhile, uh, something happens. The live stream is starting right now. So long story short, she crashes into Boog's performance and breaks her boat and blames it on everyone else. So the other characters then offer to repair her boat. This leads to her then realizing that Boog is actually that one bear from that one video that went viral. What video you may be asking? Never explained. I don't know. Probably mine. Didn't the first movie take place in like 2006? But anyways, this cat character decides to use him for cloud chasing. So basically, she's only slightly less of a skanky whore than Sniper Wolf. So she shows him around and lets him play Half-Life Alex for a bit. And then conflict happens when the other characters build a boat out of Boog's nostalgia hut. But then he has a change of heart and is nice now, but uh-oh, turns out the live streaming shit was all a trap to trap him forever. Meanwhile, the other characters feel bad for ruining his nostalgia hut. And long story short, they come back to help set him free. And their plan is to cancel her in a live stream, I guess. <laughs> Apologies, fans. It's a blast to eat some ass. Tack all the ass eaters in your life. And TLDR, he's broken free. So they repair his nostalgia hut, and that's the whole two-parter episode. Yay. I mean, that was the one with the most going on in it, even though I really didn't want anything going on in it to actually happen. The next one involves characters doing chores comedically, and that's kind of the whole thing, I think. This one's just kind of aimless, more so a bunch of gags. Like I said, there really isn't much narratively in this show. And the last episode includes the skunk character hypnotizing people to promote her self-help book. So in other words, she's pretty much Andrew Tate. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Blue!
And what I described is literally the entire show. Or at least the amount that was out and that I watched by the time of making this video. And yeah, that's literally like the entire thing so far. It's pretty much nothing. It's not that good of a show, but it's not that terrible either. The fact that it exists is more interesting than what actually happens in the thing. Overall, the show is mid. And I will never have any idea who the hell it was made for. At its bottom line, it's a basic comedy show. With a few really cringy, out of place jokes here and there, but nothing really to write home about. Well, at least the open scene season IP is alive and thriving. At least for now, you know, fifth time's the charm. Watch this show if you want, I guess. I don't know. Who cares? Now, the real question is, uh, when's Alpha and Omega coming back? Fuck you in the lane, you can't win. Me and you ain't on the same shit. You ain't in my lane, bitch, nah. All that shit in fifth, probably on my wrist. Ay, baby, you a son. I'm my only wish. I'm counting. Blue honest, I'm too money. I'm a little bitch, you too lovely. Yeah, hanging up and calling me right back. Ay, baby, why you calling me like that? Yeah, getting high with the seat, lay back. Baby, gon' relax, yeah. Hey, they don't know the half, yeah. No matter what happened, I got your back. Baby, that's the facts, yeah. That's the facts, yeah. Hey, we fight, but the feeling's gone. I try to find the words, but they never come. I can still see you on the lawn. Outside in the summer sun Yeah, we could fight, but the feeling's gone I try to find the words, but they never come I can still see you on the lawn hey, Laying outside in the summer sun hey, I'm with a dark-skinned girl on a Sunday That's that Black Sabbath She put them ones all down on a Hyundai And she had a habit that's the facts, yeah. That's the facts, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I got two phones up in the plug and one for the low. I got two phones up in the bed and one for the go. I got two phones under the road and one for the go. I got two phones up in the bed and one for the go. I got two phones up in the plug and one for the low. I got two phones in the blue and one for the go. I got two phones up in the road and one for the go. I got two phones, one for the plug and one for the low I got two dicks, one in my mouth and one in my hole I got too much cash in my bank and in my pocket You complain on Twitter, but you're still working at Johnny Rockets I'm on that way that I motherfucking started Yeah, I'm autistic, but you act retarded All of these haters, yeah, acting retarded I'm rocking chains and that shit go retarded I'm fucking, I weigh more bitches than you I go retarded when I'm in the booth I can't, I'm like, no, I'm my hunters and twos USA drugs, yeah, I see red and blue I got two phones, one for the plug and one for the low I got two phones, one for the bed and one for the go I got two phones, I don't know, we're gonna go I got two